Hey everyone, kind of similar to operational planning, what we want to kind of give you here is a taste of workforce planning via a short demo. It's gonna be very high level, but the idea here really is to show you the art of the possible, especially for those that have not seen the product before, right? So, but before we go into the demo, I do want to tackle a very common question that we get all the time, is simply is what is workforce planning, right? So workforce planning is a distinct product or skew of adaptive. It operates as a separate instance of adaptive planning that's connected to Workday HCM. So it's separate from your financial planning if you're using that today. And it's specifically designed to address the human resources planning needs of organization. Right? The key goal really is to help organization determine, do they need to buy, build, or borrow talent to meet their workforce demands? Right? So buy, do we need to make new hires? Build, do we need to do internal training and upskilling of our existing workforce or borrow leveraging contingent workers or contractors? And it's important to note as well is that workforce planning as a product compared to financial planning is aimed at different audiences and it has different objectives. So with financial planning that focuses on the management of financial resources, the target audience is very much finance and FP&A. While workforce planning, which focuses on the management of human capital, it, the target audience is HR, right? So with that, let's take a look at some of the key features to set these kind of two products apart. So with financial planning, you're looking at your standard annual budgeting, monthly qu or quarterly forecasting, ability to produce you know, monthly or financial reporting, as well as be able to run what if scenario planning, okay? Now with workforce planning, uh, Phil, if you could go to the next slide, we're looking at more things around talent forecasting, skill gap planning, as well as scenario planning or what ifs, right? The key theme you're seeing here is that we're going above and beyond the traditional, what we consider head, head count and compensation planning. And we're going to that next level of skills-based planning. So this is where we're really used to, we're using the predictive capabilities of adaptive planning, combining it with the rich worker data that are being tracked today in Workday HCM to drive the planning process, right? So this is giving you capabilities that you may not have in the past, right? Be able to do more and more granular analysis. Now with that, I'm gonna share a kind of real life example of, of customers that I've worked with that have used workforce planning and how they've used it. So I worked with a financial services institution, uh, their regional banking organization, and they needed a tool to essentially support their expansion, my right? ability to kind of plan their workforce to support that initiative. And they needed the ability to essentially predict not just FTE and position and role for each branch, but also the right mix of skill sets as well. So what we did here was we built uh, workforce planning where we take headcount and job and skills data from Workday HCM. So the skills, one of the key ones was the ability to speak Spanish, right? Because they were in a region of the country where that, that's very relevant for their clientele. We took time data from Workday time tracking. So that's hours worked, right? Overtime work, PTO taken, leave taken. And then we also took operational data from a third party system that has the number of transactions per branch the different tasks that's involved in jobs, so like difference between teller tasks versus transactional tasks. And we brought all, all of this data in into adaptive and developed models where they're now able to plan for branch openings and ensuring the right mix of employee skills, roles, as well as the ability to reallocate workers between different geographical branches because they have a mix of all that rich data and the ability to do predictions and plan into future. So with that, uh, I'm gonna pass this on to Scott to run through our, our brief demo here of workforce planning. Yeah, thanks, Sam. All right, so the agenda for our workforce planning demonstration today is gonna to focus on a bottoms up workforce plan um, that will start with a baseline, uh, show us kind of where we're at today uh, we'll take a look at our current workforce. We'll make a change to our current workforce. Uh, we'll then shift into our open positions uh, and make an update there and then be able to see the impact of those changes across a what-if scenario. 
uh, we'll take a look at headcount reconciliation, um, and then we'll close with publishing open positions to HCM and the functionality uh, that exists between Workday Adaptive Planning uh, and HCM. Uh, so with that, I'll go ahead and share my screen here. Um, and uh, before we jump directly into the demo, uh, just want to set the scene a little bit on what bottoms up planning is uh, and how that may differentiate from some of the other types of workforce planning that have been mentioned on the call so far today. So we talked uh, a little bit about variable workforce planning and Phil's demonstration planning based on maybe hours and capacity. Uh, we've also got strategic workforce planning that may be a little bit higher level aligning with certain KPIs or metrics, strategic initiatives that the business may have. Um, and that can be done at a little bit higher level. For the purpose of today's demonstration, uh, we'll focus on bottoms up workforce planning. So planning at the individual employee level um, and building up that plan uh, from that level. Um, the way HR and finance typically do workforce planning is going to be a little bit different. Um, and that's where having a tool like HCM and Workday Adaptive Planning um, can kind of create that cohesive 